Hi, this is Roz Mason out here at DubSpot. Welcome back. So we created our basic sound for the Soundboy Death Ray. Now we're gonna get into mapping different parameters to macros, which will allow me to control all the different parameters and sometimes get some very surprising effects. First thing I'm gonna do is work on the pitch envelope. So I wanna be able to tune that kick drum while I'm performing. So what I'm gonna do is just arrange just slight increments so that it can detune and do some cool stuff just with a single knob. So I'm gonna right click, click on pitch envelope, and select map to macro one. Now, I need to change the threshold, the minimum and the maximum, so I'm gonna go into the mapping browser. And as you can see up here, it says minimum to 100%, I do not want that. Maximum 100%, I might want that. So I'm gonna bring the minimum up to about 40%. And we'll check the, the maximum, see how that's working out. Typically, I'll do this while I'm playing. I'm going to start listening to the maximum and set the threshold. So I always keep the knob all the way to the right. That way I know what's going to happen when the knob goes all the way to the right. I've noticed people tweaking the minimum and the maximum when the knob's in the middle, it, it makes no sense because you don't know what's gonna happen when you get all the way to the right. Okay, so I'm gonna adjust this slightly. And check out the low and the knob's to the left. Okay, now I'm gonna go up and down, see what happens. Next, I'm gonna select the amount of the LFO. Right click and map that to macro two. Let's check that out. So I have control over that. Now the rate as well of the LFO, that would also be something nice to map. So I'm gonna select macro three. The frequency is going pretty high when the knob's to the right to the maximum. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust that while I listen. Now I want to make sure all the knobs are to the right so I'm tuning everything, all the parameters so that they all are exact when they're to the right. Cool. Next. I'm going to jump over here to the repeats of the second oscillator and right click and I'm going to map the repeats so that I can change those rhythms, those staccato rhythms that are going on. Okay, that's too fast. So that's 48th notes. You know, there isn't a genre in, that exists with this yet, so I'll leave it to later when it, when it actually comes about. 30 second notes. Cool. Okay, so at the minimum, it'll be 16th notes all the way up. The maximum, I'm going to put it at 6th, no, I'm going to 8th notes. So now I can go. Yeah, as you can see, the minimum and the maximum, it's slightly different for repeats or so you would think because the minimum gets faster and the maximum gets slower. I'm going to start using the controller. Soundboy is not dead yet. So what if I want to turn those repeats off and not have those rhythms happen at some point as well? What I'm going to do is actually select the sustain. 
and map that. Now the reason why is because you can't hear the repeats unless the sustain is dropped down because if the sustain's all the way up, it's just going to hold a long note as long as the note's held. You won't be hearing any repeats unless you drop the sustain, so it has an attack, a short attack, and then it runs into the repeats. So I'm going to select the sustain, map that to five. So you hear the repeats now, and then it just goes to static. I'm going to have to tweak that static a bit because it's not really sounding super good. One second. Okay, I'm also going to go into the pitch envelope, and as you can see, you can assign the pitch envelope to control different oscillators, so I'm going to click oscillator B off and see how that sounds. Cool. Now let's try with the sustain going up and down. Go into the mapping browser, and I'm going to fix that. It gets a little too loud. So I'm going to lower the sustain when the knob's all the way up. Okay, I'm getting a little bored of this rhythm. I'm sure you are too. So, <clears throat> let me just make it a little slightly more interesting. Cool, now I'm gonna turn the grid off. We don't need that. Let's just slide these notes over a little bit. So I'm going to slide the notes back and forth using the uh, arrows on the uh, keyboard. Something like that. All right, that has a little bit of a better feel. If you work quantize, it's totally cool. I'm not saying it's not, but you'll notice some tension that you'll feel in your shoulders while you're working. And if you start to loosen up, the beats off of the grid just by a hair, you'll start to feel your shoulders relax. So it's kind of a aesthetic, you know, choice that you can make, but uh, typically people can't really dance because our bodies aren't quantized. Uh, just a thought. I recommend highly that you come up with a formula for all your racks. In other words, maybe you want to say all macro ones are pitch related, all macro twos are rhythm related, uh, decay, you know, extending sounds sending to effects, stuff like that. So you, you might want to do that. I'm not doing that because I'm a slob, but, but you could probably do that and probably be better off than I am. Okay, so I'm going to click on feedback, right click, and map that to macro six. Okay. Fix that up in the mapping browser. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it about there. That's pretty good. We're not in Amsterdam, right? Okay, there we go. So let's check that out. That's problematic.
Okay, another knob that's going to work really well is the time. I'm going to select time and uh, map that to macro 7, which will make the notes really short, basically just condense all the sounds in little pops, and then extend them. I'm definitely not hearing enough dissonance for my taste, so I'm going to go back to the fine tuning and just uh, change that slightly. Cool. Next, I'm going to grab the third oscillator on the operator, oscillator C. And this one I'm going to select square 8 and adjust the envelope slightly. And let's hear it. Let me toy around with the LFO and see how it sounds with it and without it. First, I'm going to need to turn it up. So I kind of like how that sounds when I turn that on and off, and I can actually map that. So I'm going to click on the destination C, the button there, and I'm going to right click and map that to macro 8. Now I can go up and down and uh, turn it on and off. Okay, so the volume of oscillator C, I'm going to then map to the same knob as macro 4. Um, sometimes you just do this willy-nilly, you don't really think too much about it and then fix later. But uh, what I'm trying to get at is that when the repeats change, the third oscillator is going to disappear. And then it'll come in when the repeats get faster. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do here, and this is pretty important just to uh, show you guys, is that you can do cross-mapping here so that as you can see, it's the normal thing where it's all the way up, and that's the volume all the way up and then down. But if I right click, I can click on invert range so that it actually goes up in volume when the knob's to the left and down and not to the right. So that's essential when you start to cross map stuff so that it, things can get really accurate. Now that we got our macro set up, uh, we got all eight filled up, but we can always pile more on and start cross mapping like I just showed you, which is all very essential. Uh, for creating a, uh, a playable live performance tool. In our next video, I'll work on a hi-hat to add to this, as well as some uh, effects, all within the drum rack, and make it even more of an insane soundboy death ray tool. So this is Raz Messinai, aka Badawi, Subdub, Heretic of Ether, Ladyman. For more information about our courses, come to dubspot.com. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, 
DJ or do both, you come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.